So today, Dr. Scholz, we're looking at IMRT versus SBRT. Now, many times patients, you know, get diagnosed with prostate cancer and then they're given some choices. These concepts are proposed and they don't really know the ins and outs of these types of radiations, which one's gonna be best for them. And so I thought we would kind of go into that today. Can you explain what SBRT is and then go into IMRT and discuss what that is as well? So we're talking about beam radiation, uh, invisible beams of radiation that are aimed at the prostate or other targets. And the way that they achieve tumorcidal doses of radiation is that the beams cross on the target from multiple angles. And so there's relatively low dose radiation that's administered to the surrounding tissues but where the beams cross, you get very high dose, intense radiation. And uh, the technology is advanced now to where it's become so, so targeted and so precise that uh, they have uh, control within a millimeter or two of where they want this radiation to go. And they can sculpt different fields and conform to an irregularly shaped prostate and uh, just cover the borders just beautifully. The difference between IMRT and SBRT is how quickly the treatments are administered. IMRT is the sort of traditional approach and out of concern that if the radiation uh, doses were a little off at one time, the idea was to give small doses over many days, perhaps uh, six to eight weeks. And if one or two doses were a little bit out of sync, there would be very little harm as a result. Now that the radiation has become much more accurate, uh, we have the option of uh, reducing the number of visits from 25 to 40 all the way down to maybe just five visits over a 10-day period. That's called SBRT, stereotactic body radiation. And this has come about because of the improved targeting accuracy. Before I get to my next question on radiation, I just wanted to remind you that you can donate and join our cause. We want to get these videos all around the world out to people who need them. And so you can donate at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my video on IMRT and SBRT with Dr. Scholz. Is there any benefit to IMRT in going in and getting that many, um, having that many sessions versus SBRT then? Well, it's interesting. It's been learned uh, that the uh, way that our tissues respond or heal after radiation is different from individual to individual. That reason actually is because of the way our normal tissues repair radiation damage better than cancer cells repair radiation damage. But there are different mechanisms of radiation repair and some people have better radiation re repair mechanisms that function more effectively when the radiation is given slowly and other people, their genetics are different and they can repair radiation damage even when it's given quickly. And so there's a small percentage of the population, maybe about 15%, that would probably be better off with a slow administration of radiation with IMRT over a more extended period. But uh, the majority of people, about 85% of people, tolerate the more rapid radiation quite well. Is there any way to determine whether or not you would be that 15% that would benefit from the IMRT over SBRT? Yes, fortunately there's uh, there are new genetic tests that are coming out. Uh, it's primarily being spearheaded at UCLA by uh, Dr. Joanne Wheathouse. The technology is called Prostox and it um, can help elucidate which patients would be better off with a slower radiation uh, as opposed to a quick one. Okay, so when we're talking about toxicity, that also includes side effects. So does it also determine whether or not you would be more likely to have side effects of either? That's exactly what the toxicity is. Is uh, In particular, when you radiate the prostate, the urethra runs through the middle of the radiation zone. And so irritation, inflammation, uh, bleeding, uh, all these sorts of things which uh, can occur in the short term can also occur in the long term. And that's what we are most concerned about. Short-term side effects, people get through it in a few weeks and move on with their lives. Long-term side effects uh, are a real problem because uh, ongoing radiation toxicity uh, can take sometimes years to heal. So it's very nice to be able to elucidate which of these patients are going to be better off with a more slow radiation as opposed to the quick SBRT radiation, which is more convenient and I think more attractive. But uh, some individuals are better off 
going towards the IMRT option. Are there currently any head-to-head -head trials showing whether IMRT and SBRT, like which one is more effective in killing cancer cells? Yes. In terms of the anti-cancer efficacy, the two approaches appear to be equivalent. Before we had things like Spaceor, which protects the rectal wall as a gel that pushes the rectal wall out of the radiation field, it was noted that fast radiation, or SBRT, seemed to cause more proctitis. And I would steer patients away from SBRT for many years until these newer uh, gel space or technologies uh, came online. Now that they have space or, I think the SBRTs are more attractive options, primarily because of convenience. But the cure rates of the uh, two approaches appear to be equivalent. When we're talking about side effects, are there any differences between the side effects you would have from IMRT versus SBRT? Well, it's the same side effect. It's irritation of the urethra that we're concerned about. It turns out in some individuals, they're more likely to have side effects when the radiation is given quickly, and in others, when it's given slowly. Is this test, you know, approved and covered by Medicare? Is this something a patient would need to pay cash for? Yeah, right now it's in process for getting approved. I think the company is charging around $500 for the test to be run, and um, that will hopefully be covered by insurance as time goes on. So if someone takes this assay and then they find out that maybe the radiation is going to be very toxic for them, is an, you know how do they find another option? Do they talk to their medical oncologist? What would the other options be? Well, that's one of the really cool things about the test is that people who are likely to have toxicity with fast radiation are not necessarily going to have toxicity with slow radiation. There is an assay also for determining which patients might have toxicity with slow radiation. So this, uh, this technology uh, that uh, allows you to predict in advance who's going to have problems can steer you either toward the fast or the slow or in certain fairly uncommon situations, neither, where you'd say, Maybe be, should be looking at uh, some um, Tulsa Pro options or, or um, some sort of cryotherapy options or something besides radiation. It's not common, but uh, usually if one approach, the SBRT is not tenable, you can do IMRT. Well, thank you so much for mentioning SBRT because in my mind, when you look at the two treatments with one taking a lot more time and one being much shorter, the payment system to the entity giving the IMRT is going to be a lot more. You know, doctors and universities or whoever's giving that type of radiation are going to accept more payments and it's going to be a much longer process for the patient. But if the patient can go in for a shorter amount of time, you know, I would make sense that the universities are not pushing this or the treatment centers are not pushing this as much. So in that case, you know, is SBRT available across the nation? Is it um, widespread? And how can someone access it? It is available across the country. Uh, UCLA has been doing SBRT since 2013, and uh, a number of centers have picked this up. It just for the reasons you mentioned, I think for financial reasons, it hasn't been pushed very hard, and it's not as popular amongst radiation therapists because they're taking bringing in less revenues by giving the treatment very quickly. But if it's done expertly in a state-of-the-art center with space soar and with appropriate uh, precautions such as using Prostox, I think that the SBRT is a much more ac uh, attractive option and I'm glad that we can make the uh, public aware of the fact that this does exist for people. So today we talked about SBRT and IMRT. We also mentioned a radiation assay that you can take in order to know whether or not you're in the 15% of patients who would benefit more from IMRT, but it also explains the radiation side effects and the toxicity levels that may occur with you as a person. Now, I know this isn't FDA approved yet and the company is only taking cash, but it is good to know that this is coming down the line for patients maybe who have radiation as an option in their future and for those who would like more information, they can click the link in the description below and find out more about that assay. I think a couple things I wanted to highlight is if your doctor is not mentioning SBRT to you as an option and they're only mentioning IMRT, ask them about SBRT or get a second or third opinion. Find out who's doing it in your area and see if it's an option for you. You're already dealing with cancer. Your quality of life, even in just driving to appointments and having to handle those radiation sessions, you know, that matters. And so if you can do a shorter amount of sessions and it doesn't have to take such a toll on maybe your schedule, it can help relieve stress. You know, SBRT is not known, of, it's not very popular because universities and you know, treatment centers, they're not really bringing it up as much because they don't get paid out as much, but also it's a newer technology. Not everybody knows that SBRT is an option. So we wanted to bring this up to you to remind you that 
maybe just because something isn't super popular, it's our job to bring it up to you to say, hey, talk to your doctor, find out if this is an option for you and see if this is a choice you would like to make. Again, if you would like more information about your personal case, you can visit pcri.org forward slash helpline. We have prostate cancer patients who have been through this and are very uh, well trained in these areas to discuss your personal case and help you develop your questions for your medical team. Another thing is if you would like to donate, you can visit our website pcri.org forward slash donate and you can join our cause. We want to get these videos out to millions of people all over the world and we have begun that, but we want to go so much further. And please remember most of all, the PCRI is here for you. You're not alone, and I hope you have a great week.